Okay, so today I'm back out working at the camper and I'm gonna focus on the inside. As you saw in the last episode, we cleaned up the outside, it looks pretty good. There's a lot of work still to do and gotta basically paint and recock the whole thing. But for now, before that happens, I'm gonna head inside and start taking everything apart to see what needs to be fixed, what I can get rid of, what's gonna have to be replaced, and just see the overall condition. I'm gonna do a real deep clean. So let's get started. Okay, we are officially in the camper. I'm going to switch over to the GoPro so I can get a wider angle and show you what we're working with. Alright, let's get started here. Like I said, my plan is to do a deep clean today, and it's probably going to take more than just today, and really focus on cleaning out these storage spaces and opening up these different devices to see what can be removed and how much space I can free up. Ultimately, I would really like to get rid of this furnace because I don't want year-round space committed to heating this place because in the summer, this is a lot of space. It goes all the way to the edge of the camper. That's a lot of space committed to one thing that's not going to be used very often. So this is not the most efficient fridge. So what I'm thinking is I'll pull it out, try to preserve it as best I can, sell that and end up with a DC friendly, really efficient fridge, one of the chest types. Up here, I would like to get rid of this committed propane stove, the one that's hard piped in and get one that's portable. So we can use the propane up here if we need to, or we can take it outside and cook out there, which would be a little better because you're not filling this space with all the smells of cooking. Over here, this is a place where I'm still kind of trying to figure things out. This is the power controller so this takes in the shore power converts it to dc for certain things like the lights and i think some of the sensors what i want to do is add in solar so the question is do i need this unit i do want to have the option for shore power so i'm not sure what to do with that yet actually if anyone has wired up some sort of situation like this before and has input please let me know in the comments i could use some help beyond that i've already started removing little things like the curtain hangers up here and just there were all these weird little adapters for the curtains that I don't think are necessary I'd like to build some magnetic curtains for these that can just be placed over it when you need them and taken off when you don't but enough talk let's just get right into it and get started this thing the guy that I was buying it from said he pointed to this and he's like oh yeah I made that little paper towel holder I'll throw that in for you and I was like cool thanks okay got the mattress out I've cleaned it a little bit let's move on to the kitchen area Okay, so here's the front of the furnace and if you look back in here you can see it goes all the way the full width of this side of the camper so it'd be really nice to not have to have that in there and to be able to access all of this space up above it all right looks like i'm going to need to take these screws out and disconnect the propane and I should say I've already disconnected the main tank and taken it out of the camper so shouldn't have any worries there okay so this just had a 12 volt DC coming in from the side and these two small wires go to the thermostat so I've just clipped them and capped them and it should be ready to pull out now Well, if you're wondering what a furnace for a small camper looks like, this is it. Got the exhaust there, and intake I assume. That's where it is. Today, it's a new day, I'm heading out to the camper. Same shirt, different day. Yesterday after I pulled out the furnace, I was looking at the fridge and I just wasn't sure what to do. There's a lot of options with that space. 
and I wanted to test the fridge before I take it out or do anything with it and I tested it on AC and DC and it works and I know it works on propane. So what I'm going to do today is remove the fridge and ultimately list it on Craigslist to get a little money back to put back into the build because I think that fridge is just going to be too much of an energy hog for us to use full time. Beyond that, just looking at the space, I think I just want to gut it and completely redo it with some fresh plywood. Not because it's in bad shape, but just because I want it laid out differently and to more efficiently use some of the space there. So I'm also going to head into SketchUp. I took some dimensions out of the camper and sketch up a new shelf system for it. I'll show you that later. But for today, let's head inside. Okay, so now I've unscrewed all of the face screws on the fridge on the inside of the camper. Let's move around to the outside of the camper to the access panel. I'm sure there's a lot more to disconnect and unscrew out there. I'll meet you out there. All right, let's check out this back access panel. So here you can see it. And this is what the cover looks like. Up above it, this is more access. It's more just ventilation for the heat from the fridge to come out. And I will say this fridge does get pretty hot on the top of the counter on the inside when it was running, it was really warm. So it'll be nice to get rid of that. Down here, looks like we're gonna need to disconnect the AC, the DC and the propane line to be able to take this out. And I'm sure there's a few screws that we're gonna need to take out as well. You can see here is the switch panel. So that's the power of the fridge. This is the propane and the ignition, AC and DC power. And you only wanna have one of those on at a time, obviously. Whew, it is oppressively hot outside. Makes me really grateful to have an AC. And it makes me wonder in the future on hot days, if we didn't have that AC, what it would be like. With just a fan right now, I don't know. That'd be pretty hot. This has been painted over, so I'm gonna cut around with a razor just to peel that paint back so it's not gluing it into the socket. Well, <laughs> that's a pretty big hole. This'll be interesting. I have to find a way to patch that. All right, so I just took the cover off the top of the stove to get a glimpse into how the propane connects. You see it's got a good bit of rust in it. I guess that's to be expected from something you cook on, but I don't know how I feel about the stove. I think it'd be convenient, but I don't like the way this shield sits so far over it. It'd be really hard to cook on. Another thing is because it's hardwired into propane, if we ever wanted to cook outside and not get the food smells all up in the camper, it's not really an option with this stove. So if I end up rebuilding this whole cabinet system, I think what I'll actually do is just get rid of this stove, sell it, and put in a traditional camp propane stove that can be used on this countertop or can be taken outside and used out there. Tara's bag. <laughs>